Can we can we hit record on these and like delete them afterwards if we're not going to use them? That way they're not always in two. Yeah. Okay. That would, that would be good. So, um, this is very true. A lot of times, like we're we're thinking, if only I had like ten thousand dollars from the settlement, or ten thousand dollars from suing someone, or or if I like won the lottery, or if I got an inheritance, like the prodigal son, or like we see that example with the prodigal son. That this 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 prodigal, he did not have the income level of his father, and so when he got a big inheritance, he just blew it all. And, and then it just went down, 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 down. Because he didn't grow, his income went back to where he was. And he found himself a slave, uh, a servant eating the pig troughs and doing that. So it's the same thing no matter what. Like gambling, when you're gambling and you hit the jackpot and you get a bunch of money that way. But if your personal growth does not match the amount that you have, then it drops down. Because it violates the law of compensation. And... Um, and that, that your personal growth is your ability to add value to the marketplace. So it is what you guys are saying is the value that you put out there. But in order to grow our income means that we have to increase our valuable skills that we have and we master. And he was explaining the most valuable skills that we can have is building relationships. There's another, there's another very strong connection. A lot of the wealthiest people in the world say... Your network equals your net worth. What is a net worth? Your value? No. Kind of not really. What is your net worth, Mom? Net worth is um, what you're worth, like what you're putting out there is what you're getting back and what, all that you're, you equate to. The, the last statement is better. Does anyone know what a net worth is? What, you, what your um, value is. Net worth is how much money do you have with all of your bank accounts, all of your assets, assets. combined? Well, your, your assets and your um, liabilities and, and the sum of it or whatever that's called, the total of it. Yeah. So it's basically everything that you own, how much is that worth? So you've got like property, you've got vehicles, you've got, um, you've got your bank account, you've got different items that are around the house, just whatever you have, when you take all that together and combine it, that's your net worth. So Ellen White, when she died, she had a net worth of millions of dollars. And she, she had royalties that were... I mean, she was a multimillionaire when she died. Um, and Abraham had, was, was like a, a, probably a billionaire. He was very wealthy. Job was a multimillionaire. Um, Solomon was actually a trillionaire. Solomon was the wealthiest person on the planet throughout all human history. Um, there's no one more that received more. So... Um, so basically, what, what what a lot of times so people oh, I'm sorry. yeah, go ahead. How can network be your network? Because what is what is network? People. Yeah, it's relationships. It's the people. Because remember the law of association. Uh, the law of association shows that you are an average of the top five people that you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you begin to speak like who you hang out with. You think like those you hang out with. You earn of what who you hang out with. The people that you surround yourself with are the people that um, that uh, they they influence you, and you think like them. And so when you like like this right here, people's income level is based on their, the way that they think, their, 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 their mindset of value and their mindset of contribution, their mindset of, of exchange and understanding. Like there's principles that they're, they're following to receive that income level. Mm -hmm. And if you're, like I knew in my experience when I first gave my heart to Christ, before that from age like 10 to 16, I was buying and selling stuff constantly. I was, I was making thousands of dollars before I was a teenager. And um, then 
but then I gave my heart to Christ and I was around people who with a poor man mentality and then instantly I stopped selling anything. And the sales skills that I use, persuasion, I started using that to sell the gospel, sell ideas, sell beliefs, sell and teach. But I didn't sell any like thing for dollars because the people I was around, my income was kind of was influenced by those individuals who were in ministry. Uh, so in like manner, when I started being around people that were that were think differently on finances, then I began to realize, oh, like I went to Washington D.C. and saw that was a multi hundred thousand dollar endeavor doing evangelism, and it was like reaching people. I'm like, wow, there's a lot more freedom, just like he was saying in the thing, there was freedom to win souls for Christ and do things we never would have been able to as a poor missionary. So we had options for evangelism. And then I was like, okay, and he taught me that there was principles of finance. There's biblical principles and there's a reason what that, um, that like finances come to different ministries. And when you just learn the principles, then you'll receive the finances to do ministry. So I started praying, I'm like, Lord, please introduce me to people evangelist, missionary-minded individuals who understand the principles and, and help me to learn from them. And so then I met, I met different people who were able to start teaching me some of those things. And, um, you know, then and we're... That's, that's another thing you have to, like, you know... The best, it's a Gen X. the best that I could do for you was what I did for you and for you to go beyond you how to seek out to do that. You actually have to seek for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. To get better, you have to seek. And and when you look at it, remember when I was explaining before that all business, every business is really just or organization, is is you're developing a network, and you are in you are recruiting people to that network, and you're increasing the productivity of that network. Even when you're looking at the church setting, a church is just a network of people. It's a congregation, it's a people, it's relationships, it's community. So then you recruit people to that network, that's evangelism, that's conversion, that's, so you're bringing people coming and you increase the productivity of that network in their ability to recruit and to share. And, and what you are, um, like you're distributing products and services through that network or in the church setting, it's be like you are distributing the gospel. You're communicating the message of salvation, the plan of salvation. You're, and you're increasing the productivity of, of, that, of that organization to be able to share the message of Christ through more people. But that also, um, that also, like, people, as you're adding value to the lives of the people who are attending church, they want to financially support the mission of the church. So the network equals the net worth. There's a connection there. Does that help answer your question a little bit? Yeah. Okay. What stood out to you, Kathy? Uh, in the second one? I already said what stood out in the first one. But yeah, if you want to do the second, second one? one. Okay, and the second one, is it all worth it? I like how um, when he was talking about, of course he was saying with networking, but I put in ministry. With ministry, you have friends all over the world. Mm-hmm. You can find friendships that last a lifetime and maybe even the love of your life. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, the importance of, like, you, somebody told you, if you want friends, yeah. you know, join the ministry. Yeah. Join a ministry. It's so true. And that is so true. And he was pointing out that's, you know, that's where the, those are the people that are not toxic that we want to yeah. work with yeah. and learn from and, and associate with. Yeah. Is in ministry. The dream team. That's right. It's like, who are the people that it would be a dream to surround yourself with, to work with, to yeah. be encouraged by? And uh, God is yeah. God is ready and able. I, it is according to God's will that we we work for Him. I never dreamed I'd have sisters in Pakistan. Yeah. And brothers in, you know, and other places of the yeah. world. You know, so it's just, it's neat. It is neat. I'm glad you're here, Sister Leah. What's, what stood out to you, Sister Theodora? You tend to become like the five closest people to you. And it's important for them to be positive, not negative. Why does that stand out to you? Because 
without knowing you are being influenced. Yes. Yeah. Without knowing. Without knowing. That's how laws work. Like the law of gravity. If a baby like walks off a cliff and violates the law of gravity, there are consequences. Whether that baby is aware of that law or not, is totally ignorant. If, if you obey the law of gravity, there are blessings. If you violate the law of gravity, then there will be consequences. Laws are no respecters of persons. It's as simple as cause and effect. And so when you're re dealing with the law of association, the reason why it's a law is not because it works, but because the word of God says, he that walks with the wise shall be wise. That's the word of God is the law. That's his will. Amen. Or be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. And the same thing applies with like, if you're around people with broken families, messed up families, and, and that's who you spend the most time with, it's going to erode your family circle. Now that doesn't mean that we don't spend time with them at all, but like uh, we come in as a missionary, we're on a mission, we're there to help and to connect, but we're not there to live and dwell among and surround ourselves with and spend the most time with them. Amen. So it's the same thing financially, is the people that you spend time with financially, you will adopt their mentality. If people are, are, have that mentality of like, get a really, go to school, get a great job, and get good benefits, and go do that, and that you're surrounded by people that are pressuring you to go on that route of life, to do what all the Broadway or all the, the, the world is doing, then you're going to get like the same results. But, in or but if you surround yourself with ministry-minded people who are thinking like, look, the value of souls is far more valuable than uh, following the path of everyone else or even like the wealth of this world, then, uh, and it's like, you could serve in ministry. You can use your talents for God. You can dedicate yourself for Christ's service. The voice that you, that you hear the most, they'll influence who you are. When I gave my heart to Christ, I asked God, I'm like, God, what must I do to have a relationship with you? It's like two things. You got to quit playing video games and you got to change your friends. And there's a reason for that. So it's a law of association because the word of God states the principle. And that's where the laws are defined. Every verse is a law. It's cause and effect. It's so powerful. When he says freedom means living the life you want to live, not the life others want you to live. That's like, you know, in that group where they want you to go to college, they encourage you to go to college, they you know, that's not necessarily the life the Lord wants you to live. Yeah, especially when you read the book Education. Amen. And you start realizing what, what is true education and the purpose of it and what is false education. And you realize that majority of the world is not following God's plan of education. Amen. And it causes a lot of pain and sorrow in life. So that's very true. Um, I think freedom, and when I read freedom, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen. Does God want us to have freedom? Amen. He does. He wants to have freedom, but freedom, I, uh, Psalm says, I walk at liberty because I, I keep thy precepts, and precepts are laws. So it is understanding the laws of God that are governing all of our outcomes and results that are going to bring us true freedom. So what a lot of network marketing, entrepreneur, like understanding these things are, it's understanding what are the laws that are bringing about all the results, abiding by these laws, and then we start having the blessings of obedience and just living in harmony with God's plan and purposes for our life. It's really a beautiful thing. Um, so, I thought this was cool. So, I've been thinking about these, uh, these frameworks, right? So, for the six basic ways of, um, six basic human needs, yeah. there's like love, which has like the five love languages. There's, um, there's significance. So, that's like the four levels of value that we contribute. And then there's contribution. He showed that there's three ways to contribute. Who remembers what those three ways of contribution is? Money, time, influence. Money, time, influence. Which one stood out to you the most? Influence. The ripple effect. You know how, like, Spirit Nancy talks about um, 
the like your influence. I guess she does talk about the influence being like a ripple. Yeah, Christ's object lessons, chapter twenty five, my favorite that's, chapter. That's interesting. It's my favorite yeah, section in the chapter. <laughs> well, but to be I honest, that's most interesting too, because influence. Just think, we were influenced by Adam. That's how far reaching that is. Also, Ellen White was influenced by um, different books like this. Like, you can tell that she read, um, uh, uh, what is it, Women's Young Ladies Counselor, which is part of a personal development um, category. It was by a Methodist preacher who was a Christian, but they're biblical principles, and um, she, wa she listened and read books like this, too. So that's some of the reason I see that there's connection because she says an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure I mean that's inspired by God like you could see who's the originator of that but she read that from like Benjamin Franklin and she talks about how businessmen um, talk about the essential of regularity and routine or Washington the nation statesman was just once asked like how is it that you're able to accomplish so much business and he says because everything has its place and everything in its place I don't spend a moment looking for a lost paper She's reading these these books and things on uh, some of these these statesmen. And, and you yeah. Know yeah. And, and you mm -hmm. think often you think of that. And um, what's the chances of those things being in our ears today if it didn't reach some powerful person who had a big big influence that could spread it out even more more than what they could do themselves? Yeah. Just the influence is profound. It's amazing. Influence equals leverage. This is what allows you to leverage your 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 knowledge, your experience, your love, your contribution, your like all these things. Influence is what is able to take whatever your message, your mission, your method, like God's calling on your life, and you could just multiply it. There's no limit with a lever. The man once I forgot who is like, give me a lever long enough and I'll move the worlds. And it's through leverage that you're able to do that. I could just see the world and somebody's got a big lever. Just, yeah. Pop it out of orbit. That's right. <laughs> but, but we'll just take them all to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> with with enough there. leverage. And that's what Jesus is doing. The most influential book in the planet, it's because of leverage and publishing is. Publishing is one of the greatest ways to create leverage because it's the one-to-many approach. Yes. Yeah, because you just couldn't spend time with everyone. He had to say to people, like, when he healed them, don't go tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> so they could go tell everybody, right? <laughs> That's the quickest way to get them to say something. Tina, were you in the middle of saying something before we started talking? Like, you were saying why influence, like, stood out to you, and you were talking about the ripple effect and... I think I was done. Oh, okay. Kathy, did you, were you about to say something? I had a question. Yes. You know, money, time, and influence. Influence equals leverage. Money equals value. What is time? Time is time. Time? Does that have a valuable? Time is your priorities. <laughs> okay. But, um, yeah, time is, time is uh, of, of no talent. Essence. Of no talent. Uh, is God going to require the strictest account than the use of our time? Okay. Time is more valuable than money. And time is of the essence. Yeah, time is short. It's, it's the scarcest resource that we have. The most limited, unrenewable resource that we have. When time is squandered, it can never be gathered again. So what we do with our time will determine our destiny and the destiny of souls. So it's so essential that we understand the value Even of time. Up in yeah. And we, we constantly have to be thinking, what can we do now that only we can do with our time? And in heaven, we won't be able to win souls for Christ. Our time here on earth is limited. Thank you. Yes. Um... Oh, that's not mine. Okay. It was interesting how you said network marketing forces you to become a better person. It does. You know why? It's 
really interesting line. He explained it at the beginning of the um, speech that he did. What did he do? What did he do when he first got into um, network marketing? Well, you learn that, uh, before you start learning. Uh, How did he get his people? Do you remember? By trying to quickly talk to um, everybody before his dad did. Yeah. 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 So he learned from those experiences. Though. So by doing that, the level that he 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 yeah, kept his, his level. His personal right growth was right there. And he couldn't go any further without. And fear. Yeah, he couldn't go any further without developing himself. He had to so get better he, as a person. Yeah, when he developed himself, then he his network opened up more to him, and then he he caps it off again. He had to learn and, selflessness, and to keep service. Growing. Contribution. We're learning love. in days what it took him years to learn. And he's yeah. teaching it to us. It's all packed in a book. Yeah. And it's powerful. And we're able, especially you, you, you guys at your age, to be able to get it. It's usually all this is like, when I look back at the way I grew up, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And what, it's just so different. Not that so we, different. we compare ourselves with each other, but when you look at at um, how you how it could have turned out, you know, and you'll be able to see that because of the way your your family turns out, and compared to how you turn out, you'll you'll see the difference if they don't, you know, grow. Yeah, the principle is truth. Truth will make set you free if it's a liberating belief or limiting belief. Limiting beliefs always limit you, yeah. but liberating beliefs bring freedom, and freedom brings options. Options bring possibilities. And you certainly feel it when you grow. You know, when, when you're when you're not afraid to stand in front of people and talk, or when you're that's able impact. To, yeah, when when you're when you're changing, you you feel it. You feel it in your body and your mind. Yeah. So, question: How many books a month did Eric read Five. on average? No, four. Four. How many books a year is that about? About four times twelve. 52. It's about 52 books a, a year. That's intense. But he said like... That's a book a week. Read, read, read 10 pages a day. That's for getting started, yeah. yeah started. Did you know that it is a frequent... Con it is a, a consistent statistic that I want you to mark and notice across the board on many of these uh, CEOs and top earners and professionals and people who are like influencing the world... Many of them read about a book a week. Leaders are readers. Leaders are readers. They are. And you can it, earn while you learn. I remember Oprah starting her book club. Just everybody just, and she sold a she sold a book millions million that book that she she sponsored got millions. It was an overnight success. So. And it helps people. The professionals were what kind of student? Georgia. What did you say? The professionals were what kind of student? Continual. They are, but that's not it. That's not it. You're no. looking for a specific word. Yeah. I he, probably didn't get it. Let's start it. with. Do you guys remember this acronym? How you can learn anything fast? Fast. Forget. 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 Act. Close. You're missing. Action. Nope. Activity. activity, yeah, that's right. Active. The last one is Forget teach. State. teach. What is teach. S? State, teach. Give me my state. What is state? state Speak. Well, what is your state of mind? It's your thoughts. Liberty beliefs. It's it's your beliefs. State. What do your beliefs state create? Beliefs. So the heart speaks the mouth. State, yeah. Character. <laughs> the, and character is comprised of what, two things. So, if the thoughts are wrong, what else is going to be wrong? Feelings. feelings. So your state is your emotion, your emotional state. It's your feelings, which is caused by your beliefs. So right now, if we're feeling remorse, regret, if we're feeling distracted, or if we're feeling overwhelmed, if we're feeling um, condemned, 
this entire class, this entire conversation would be extremely difficult to learn. It would, we wouldn't remember it, we wouldn't enjoy it, we wouldn't retain this, we wouldn't understand what we're talking about if we're so consumed with discouraging painful emotions. All learning is state dependent. But if you're enthusiastic, if you're excited, if you're looking forward, if you're anticipating, that state that you bring, like if you are expecting to learn something new, you will learn something new. But if you're thinking, does this apply to me? Or if you're thinking this doesn't apply to me, then in you're anticipating that it doesn't apply, you will not learn. But if you anticipate, if you're in an anticipatory state that you're expecting that you're going to learn something that applies to you in the context of what you're doing, you will learn something. But it's state dependent. It's what you believe about Amen. what you're learning. It makes a huge difference. But what I want to talk to you about is active. The professionals are active learners. What does it mean to be an active learner? Doing. Doing what? Doing what you learn. Okay. Applying, learning, experiencing it. Okay, but how, how are you doing? What are examples of active learning? Like do the body review thing. It's like if you want to make lasagna, then reading a book just don't cut it. You have to actually do it. Okay, what else? What else? Uh, active learning? Yeah, active learning. What is it? What is active learning? That's part of it. It's like teaching the active. Active learning is asking Why? questions. Right now, when you get stuck and you don't understand something, like when Kathy was asking a question over here about like influence equals leverage and and. Uh, what was it? Money, Money equals, equals value. value. What is time? Like that's her being an active learner. And as she is engaging actively in the information and the knowledge, she is learning far faster by asking questions than anyone else who is staying silent. Acting, uh, active learning is um, actually taking the effort to, to learn also. Yes. So um, Tina's over here taking notes. Active. And as she's taking notes, she's not taking notes. She's writing her mom. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> mom, you're a little too active. <laughs> but but I, I have the notes that she took up there. But um, while she's taking notes, Carmen's taking notes, and and Kathy's taking notes. When we take notes, even if you don't review your notes. You learn faster by the taking notes than if you never did. Too. You remember more, even if you never look at them again. That's right. So um, you're by taking notes, you're engaging physically with the information and what you're going through. The more um, senses you can use in learning. Yes. The more five senses. Engaging your five senses is going to help you to learn way faster. Yeah. And another way is when I ask you a question and you respond, uh, by you responding, that's a form of active learning. But if you are in here and you're quiet, you are silent. When I'm asking questions and you don't respond or you're like, you're just passively like active is the opposite of passive passively oh. is just sitting there listening just silently observing what? That's not speaking not really moving just kind of it's a level of it looking like that's passive learning and that is how you can ensure to forget what you learn if you want to make sure that you do not learn and you don't remember well. and you it's you find it difficult to apply to your life be a passive learner but if you want to apply, if you want to have information that's useful, be active, ask questions, respond when I ask questions, engage your five senses, take notes, 
and whether you review them or not. But reviewing your notes is going to be another step of active learning. And another thing is um, you need to pay attention. You need to listen. You need to like zero in on daydreaming during that time. Or, you know. Yeah, being focused. Yeah, yeah we, we can see that. That's good. Um, there's something else. Uh, there's something else about active. Friends, when I learned this, it was life changing for me. You have no idea. You know how many people are passive learners? You know how much suffering is caused in this world, especially in relates to their personal growth, when they are passively learning in, in learning environments? That's because, like, like a school, that's what a school is in reality. And that's why people don't retain the stuff that they, that they learn because, you know, if the teachers are teaching up there and just like, yeah. And, and some sure. people just are going about life and they don't even realize that they can learn. Yeah, they don't. Or they're, or they're not interested in it or whatever. Just they're yeah, not, they're not in an interested state. Yeah, interest is a state. Going, bumping along. So what about not only asking questions like, hey, can you like back up or can you elaborate on this? Or, hey, I don't understand this. Can you explain that a little more? Or it's like when you say no bad experiences, do you mean, like these are all great questions that you can apply over and over and over. Like I am concerned, well, like you hear me say this often, I'm concerned when there's students who are, who are learning but they're not asking questions or they're not responding. Participating so that much. to me is, is an indication that they're not going to be a fast learner or they're not, they're, I don't think it's like a deliberate rebellion or choice. A lot of it's cultivated, like you're saying, we learn in false education to not engage and just passively sit. So it's, it's, these aren't things that we're taught. These aren't skills that we're given. These are things that you have to come across. Like you guys are blessed to be a part of this conversation. I was blessed to stumble across it in life and also to have my mom who just, she's a very active learner. And so she really helped me understand like, hey, if you're the only one to ask a question, I was a person who had my hand raised. I paid 100% attention in school because my life was, like my thoughts would be so tormented if I daydreamed or did whatever. So I, that was my escape in life. Like I had to fully engage in the classroom while I was at school. Otherwise I was just so depressed that I just would just be consumed. So by me engaging, it was an escape. When I was at home, I would, be consumed in the video games, and that was my two biggest distractions. So that's why I did so well on the test because I was in, I was one of the most active learners in the class. Uh, but you know, God used that and helped to redeem. But then later on, listening to the podcast, I began to realize, oh, that's actually a thing. That, that's uh, that's how you learn faster. Yeah, that's like that's cool. I didn't know the science of being an active learner. So not only asking questions but answering questions. So many people are afraid of failing. So many people are like, what if I get asked a question that I don't have the answer to? And I remember in school, there's so many people that were afraid to raise their hand when the teacher would ask because they're like, I don't want to be humiliated in front of everyone else. And what that did, it actually closed the door of learning to them and it made it to where they wouldn't be able to grow any experience because there's no bad experience. If you don't, un if you, answer a question wrong, that's not a bad experience. That's a learning experience. And I learned more from the questions that I got wrong than the questions that I always had right. So the more questions you answer, the more you will learn. And another thing is... Um, Why are you looking at me like that? What do you think about that? No, I agree. Oh, okay. What was that, Mom? Another thing is um, if you... Uh, when you're learning something, think of how are you going to use that? Where are you going to use that? At? Think about how, how can that enhance like some other subject that you're not actually learning at that moment? You know, like, like, like we can learn it on, on network marketing. And then we say, how can we use this in Christianity? Amen. You know, you just like look to see where else what you're learning how 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 far widespread it can be yeah remixing the, it the, the more you can do that the more it you expands learn, your actually. thinking yeah. it liberates your beliefs yeah. it allows all life to be learning 
in your classroom it doesn't have to be during a pioneer session your classroom could be through the daily experiences of life that's when things get really and and that's why experiences are is another form of active learning okay cool so that is something i really wanted to share about how many times did he listen to the recording of the parable of the seed sower by jim rones yeah. yeah so how many times should we listen to this audiobook to get the skills <laughs> these seven skills that are fundamental to sharing uh christ with the world and jim rones give but it seems like um eric Worre just shoots him out like a, like a machine gun and Jim Rohn, he kind of like pops it off and pops it off. <laughs> I don't know, Mom. I think you're referring to a book, but I don't know if you've listened to his books. You, Who, Jim Rohn? Um, yeah, Rohn? Jim Rohn. You, I used to listen to him back in the 90s. That's okay, but he has a lot of like presentations and, and like sermons and I mean like lectures and stuff. What I find is, remember what, yesterday when I was telling you about the question like, take me to your mentor. Who trained you? You realize that Jim Rohns is one of those mentor of mentors. Jim Rohns trained Tony Robbins. Jim Rohns trained um, Eric Worre. Jim Rohns trained Dave MacArthur. Jim Rohns trains like all of these top me, top me. income earners all around the world in in so many different fields of business. Jim Rohns was the mentor of each of these people. Right. So like when you're looking for like higher level stuff, and when you look at his his training, Jim Rohns. Um, m like the parable of the seed sower that's literally like a bible study just breaking down what are the, the business principles we can learn from the parable of the so seed sower some that's fell on stony seed, yeah. stony ground some fell on uh, got eaten mentor? by the birds yeah <laughs> who was Jim Rohn's mentor Jesus and you said you see the bible you see Jesus and there was a man named Shoaf Mr. Shoaf or Sh Shof yeah. and Mr. Shof and so um, Mr. Show up? I don't know where, yeah, not show up, but I don't know where, um, he probably didn't have as much recording, I don't know. But yeah, you see Christ and Jesus, and, and Eric Worre mentioned how Stephen, the late Stephen Covey, um, he was also a guy that, that mentored so many of these people, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and I listened to an interview that he did, he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm, I'm really a faith-based person, I strongly believe in the Word of God, I'm a Christian. And so everything that I teach in personal growth and these principles, like in my books, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, it's just biblical principles that I'm contributing to the world. And that's what... They use that, the, that book in um, college. Yep, in colleges. And he was a teacher in colleges. I didn't realize that. but um, Yeah, so when you begin to realize, like, take me to your mentor, who mentored you? And who mentored you? And who mentored you? And you like trace back every gem and beautiful oh thought really God, came from Jesus. Christ. He is the most influential person this world has ever seen. And he did it so, right. so to develop the character of Christ is to develop an influential character and to be a leader that influences leaders. He, yeah. Leader of leaders. So, um, all right. Um, I think that is... That is good. <sighs> I think this is good. I really like, yes? With your fast, which I really like. With the fast, it's the faster you teach it yeah. is the faster you learn it. Yeah. I was explaining that to Tina yesterday. It's like me. I learned when I was 12 that I can learn math so much faster by helping those around me. And when I just shared with them what little I knew, like you don't have to be in fourth grade to teach third graders how to be, do third grade math. You could be a third grader teaching your other third graders how to do third grade math. That's what I did in seventh grade. And I would just share with them the things that the teacher just said and they're like, I'm stuck. I'm like, well, this is what the teacher said. They're like, oh, why didn't, he, why didn't the teacher say that? I'm like, he did, you just missed it. But um, I realized that I learned math so much faster, got like 110% on the tests and quizzes because I would teach them. I did zero extra credit. Answering no question wrong and then doing all the extra credit. But um, I did zero homework. I never took anything back home because I was playing video games. So the only learning I did was in class. Is that craziness? No. And Sarah would sit there for hours. Yeah. And she was an A student. 
<laughs> so, she was. But uh, school wasn't for me. Um, but I learned that teaching, that was the, that's the thing. So when I became a Christian and I wanted to learn the gospel, I realized I, if I want to learn the gospel, I need to share it with other people. If I want to understand prophecy, I need to share it with others. If I want to understand how to become patient, I need to teach others how to be patient. So whatever the skill or the character trait or the, the, the thing that I want to understand, I have to share with others. And I, and I learned in Daniel eleven thirty three. They that instruct, they that understand shall instruct many. So adopt the belief that you really don't understand something until you can teach it. If you can't teach it to something, you don't understand biblically. And uh, it's one of those things where it's like that experimental knowledge where we got to teach. And that, that could be just sharing our devotions. It could be on Messenger. It could be on your story 15 seconds and, you know the great commission is like it's like it's it's such a little basic easy simple thing to do yeah. you know and and all, we just have to keep doing it over and over and over and over and over and over yeah so, that's so true yeah all right let's uh how about we close here with a word of prayer yes mom would you like to pray for us sure all right Dear Lord, um, the way that you created us, it's really amazing how we can learn and we can learn from each other and we can teach each other and and just the way that you set things up to where, to where that's, that's what we're supposed to do with it. We're supposed to teach other people. There's so many people who are suffering, who don't understand, who don't know. There's a time when we didn't and, and by your grace um, we learn and I just thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you do for us. And please help us to not only learn, but to help other people learn and to um, be the best that we can be and help people to be the best that they can be so that we can see people the way that you see them and not the way that we perceive them. And um, help us to keep learning, Lord, because I know we're just touching the surface. Help us to be Christ-like in all that we do say and be. Um, please... Be with us always. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen. Oh, thank Amen. you, Enoch, and I pray God blesses you too for everything you do for us.